What is up, everyone? I'm Kevin. And I'm Kyle. And we are the, the Brothers, Brothers Williams. Williams. Today, we're going to be talking about a movie that's been out for a little while now. We just finally got around to seeing it. Um, and since we're making our rounds with the DC movies that have come out now, we figured we may as well see this before Wonder Woman starts up uh, next year, I think. Yeah, yeah. I think it's next year. Yeah. So but, today, uh, we're talking about Shazam. Yeah, and, you know, we're just going to dive right in. So if you haven't seen it and you don't want it spoiled, just click away. Because mm -hmm. um, we're going to be talking about spoilers. So, diving right in. Um, we both really enjoyed the movie. Mm -hmm. um, Very good. Very good. Yeah. Well, what are your thoughts? I don't think that the commercials did it justice. Because from the people I've talked to about it so far they were apprehensive of seeing it because it felt too um, comic booky, like it wasn't very serious, right. which was interesting when it comes to a DC movie. Right. Because they tend to be very serious movies compared to Marvel's, but the, like I said, the commercials didn't do it any justice. Right. It was much darker than I thought it would be. There were, like, the parts where he threw his brother out the window and the seven deadly sins literally eating people right there was like, wow. I yeah. was not expecting that. Right, yeah, yeah. Yeah, definitely I think that, the, like you said, the commercials kind of painted it almost kind of like as a frivolous movie. Mm -hmm. um, but I thought that there was a lot more to it, both in, um, like, dark. There, there were dark elements, though it still had that kind of, um, levity that you would expect from a character like Captain Marvel, I mean, a uh, uh, Shazam. Quick mention, uh, the person I'm mentioning throwing a person out the window was the bad guy, not the main character. Right, right. So Shazam, he's like, um, you know, 14-year-old kid. Mm -hmm. Foster care, or 16? 14. 14, okay, yeah. Well, yeah. technically he said he's almost 15. Okay. But whatever. Yeah, so, I mean, I just thought it was, you know, the way they went through his backstory and the things that he's dealing with, I thought it really kind of portrayed him in a much more sympathetic light mm -hmm. than, like, mm -hmm. you know, you don't see that in the commercials. You just see, oh, some kid who's kind of a troublemaker becomes Shazam, mm -hmm. you know? Um, and I thought that, I thought it had a lot more heart to it than um, I was expecting. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Just, so, yeah, so it's kind of got, there's more dark elements, which I think those elements really just show you how serious you should take the villain. Mm. That it's not, not necessarily like, oh, we want to make this, like, really dark movie, but it's like, hey, this guy's serious. He's a really horrible human being. Yeah. Um, and this is why Shazam has to stop him. Mm -hmm. You know, he, he's not just some guy who got these the seven deadly sins in him and now he's like not really done anything but he seems scary because he's got a glowing purple eye it's like oh he killed his brother and his dad and a whole bunch of other innocent people mm -hmm. yeah. and he's always sort of been a rotten person even from childhood a little bit yeah yeah definitely so yeah so i thought it was really good mm -hmm. um really enjoyed it so um but while we were watching Shazam, well, after, I guess, uh, Kevin brought it to my attention, and it's something that, upon reflection, I've really kind of say seen, is the different ways that heroes are treated in the DC Universe versus the Marvel Universe. And what I mean by that is how the public in each universe views the heroes that are there. Yeah, this is an idea I've brought up to a couple of people already, and at the minute I mentioned it, it clicked in their minds, oh yeah, yeah, that is a thing. So, what I, what were, what I brought up to Kyle, um, and this was mostly, I noticed this mostly because I'm more familiar with the comic books than him, um, the heroes in DC are basically worshipped, uh, they... You know, they implicitly trust their heroes, they take interviews with them right after they've done something heroic. 
Uh, in Aquaman, the, uh, the biker dudes at the bar, you know, at first I thought they were going to be, you know, wanting to beat up on Aquaman because, oh, he's a freak. He's different from us. But instead it was like, can we get a picture with you? You're really cool. We got our own local superhero. This is awesome. And the reason I expected that was partly because of the way the characters or the superheroes in Marvel get treated. And I'll get to that in a second. But the, we notice this a lot more in Shazam because you've got t-shirts of heroes, you've got the toys, you've got people talking about them all the time, mm -hmm. and it's like the heroes are worshipped. In the comic books, the Flash has his own museum dedicated to just him, and that's a pretty big deal. Now, for the Marvel Universe, their heroes are base, barely tolerated. Um, yeah. You notice this a lot more with the X-Men because uh, the way the public treats them is they're freaks, they're muties. We need to beat them up and hate them because they're different. Yeah. And, um, and even when we're talking about, you know, the Avengers, mm -hmm. look at Captain, that Civil War. Mm -hmm. You've got this whole thing where it's like, whoa, we don't trust you guys. We've got to do something about this. I mean, kids are kind of like, oh, cool superheroes. But, like, adults are like, no way, get these people mm -hmm. away from me. Even Once one of the most beloved superheroes, Spider-Man, gets treated like a menace to society. Yeah, whereas in DC, you don't really see that very often. You saw a little bit of it with um, in Batman vs. Superman. Mm -hmm. um, but even then, it's kind of like, you've got two separate factions. Some people are like, oh, you know, Superman's amazing, we've got like these statues of him, and basically worshipped, mm -hmm. um, and that's the that's the problem that, um, what's his face? Uh, Batman? No, the, the baldy... Lex Luthor. Lex Luthor. Um, Lex Luthor has with Superman is the worship that he's being given by the people, you know, and he engineers a situation to make it so that way people don't trust these superheroes mm -hmm. as implicitly as they do. Which it seems to fail because, you know, Shazam mm -hmm. shows up and everyone's like, oh, whoa, cool, new superhero, let's check him out, let's get photos with him, mm -hmm. you know? And, oh, let's interview him and all this kind of stuff. And there's no, like, oh, a new super-powered person. Can we trust this person? Mm -hmm. No, they just went right into, wow, this guy is so cool. Yeah, yeah, and so there's like this different dynamic within Marvel versus DC uh, movies mm -hmm. of how these people with superhero superpowers are treated. Yeah, other than that, um, another main difference uh, that happened in the comics was when they had a, a crossover between Marvel and DC. Uh, they had the Justice League and the Avengers fighting each other, and they brought up the point that the Justice League, they are much, much more stronger than the Avengers. But because of that difference, the Avengers work that much harder. And I think that can be seen in the movies because the Avengers, when they deal with stuff, like sometimes they get their trash kicked. And because yeah. of that, they come back that much harder to try and win. Yeah. Whereas with DC, eh, it's more like... They just have to deal with it for longer, just because their uh, villains are that much more powerful, I think. Right, right. And so, you've got, like, um, I saw this meme a long time ago that's always kind of stuck around in the back of my mind, but Marvel is these, you know, humans trying to be gods, whereas DC is gods trying to be humans. Mm -hmm. um, and so I think that there's, like, this this difference in the storytelling of where these heroes come from, what their, um, you know, what their journey is, mm -hmm. and how they, how they interact with the problems and the people around them. And I think that that really shows in, especially in Shazam versus some of the other Marvel movies. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. Okay. And, um... Another thing, going back to the movies itself, uh, with DC, um, I'm really loving what they're doing with their bad guys. Uh, 
They've done a fantastic job of introducing these bad guys, giving them a backstory of some sort, and giving us a reason for why they're bad, not just, here's a bad guy, okay, sure, he's evil, but why? And we've seen that now with um, Black Manta from Aquaman, um, with, I don't know what his name is, but the uh, eyeball guy from Shazam, uh, and they showed this little worm dude with a robotic voice. I'm kind of thinking he might be the brain of a villain that's more... will be more familiar to those fans of the Teen Titans. Um, and then, of course, Joker is somewhere out there. They've made references to him with the new Wonder Woman movie that's coming out. Cheetah's going to show up. What I think they're doing, or... What Lex Luthor has brought up to Deathstroke is they're building their own league. The Legion of Doom is coming. That's what I think is happening with the DC movies, and I am so excited for it. Because that's where their true villains are. Not Darkseid, not Apocalypto or Steppenwolf, who I didn't even know existed until Justice League movie came out. The Legion of Doom is where all the top-tier bad guys show up. Yeah. So I think... You know, I really do think that with the most recent um, DC movies, I think that they are um, definitely going to tie together. I, I think that um, they've done an excellent job of saying, okay, well, here, what are some of the problems that we've had and steering away from those mm -hmm. um, and really, like, saying, okay, let's focus on these characters. Let's focus on, you know, building up the universe, building up the bad guys, and that way, you know, when the Justice League movies come out, when they're fighting, you know, the Legion of Doom or whoever, it's more impactful. Mm -hmm. um, and I think that, you know, the way, the consistency of how the heroes are treated in each movie, um, I think that that is definitely something that's kind of being um, guided from the DC executives or whoever it is, mm -hmm. um, who's kind of like, running the show and running all these different um, yeah, I movie think, productions. I think Jeff Johns, uh, the guy in charge of DC at the moment, has been involved with uh, the screenwriting. Okay. Yeah, so, and because to me that's something, like the way the public treats the heroes, is something that all sorts of different directors would have a different take on, on how, like, oh, this... You know, I want my character to be a little bit more edgy and the people that not trust them. But to see the consistency throughout these different movies... Um... <laughs> Cat time. Cat time. Say hello, Scout. Hi. Okay. Um, but yeah, so I think that that consistency throughout the, um, the movies just shows that they are taking... It seriously, they're not just kind of like throwing things out at the wall and seeing what sticks. Mm -hmm. um, so I do think that there's more of a guiding philosophy going on than I than we've seen. Than we originally thought. Yeah, yeah. Than we originally thought was going on. So, and that to me that makes me um, excited for the future, um, because you know I think that having that continuity of philosophy throughout these movies and. It can be highlighted in different ways with different characters. Um, it's really just a, a very interesting take that they're that they're going with. So, yeah. yeah. Well, I think that's everything for now. Um, if you have any thoughts on the movie Shazam or where DC's going with their live action movies, let us know. Feel free to share, like, subscribe, whatever you want to do in order to support us. Yeah. So with that. Thanks so much, and that, as, as they, they say, say, is that. that. What is up, everyone? Freaking heck. <laughs> I do this every time. <laughs>